Hey, this is Steve Polk from First Baptist Rock Hill, executive pastor here at the church. Excited to welcome you to our online worship experience. Today, our pastor is going to take us into a very interesting passage of Scripture dealing with Abraham and Sarah. Maybe not the part of the story that you remember or you would focus on, but the part of the story where they interact with Pharaoh and Abraham is willing to uh, ignore his marital relationship with Sarah uh, for self-preservation. We're going to learn a lot of lessons from this experience that Abraham had with Pharaoh along with Sarah and be able to apply that to our lives today. So I know that has piqued your interest. You're going to want to really grab that journal, grab your Bible, get a pen, and get ready to take some notes and see what God speaks, how God speaks to you through this message. So let's pray together and let's hear from the Lord. God, we thank you for today that uh, your word is timeless that even all the way from Genesis 12 to the year 2021, we can hear a clear and applicable word for our current life today. Thank you for using our pastor to to bring that message to light. Thank you for giving us your word that we can learn from it every single day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, worship service as we celebrate the love of Christ and grow in our relationship with him. I'm holding here my calendar, and and yes, I have an online calendar, but I also like to keep a hard copy so I can look at a month at a time. And one year ago, this calendar was filled with ministry plans for 2020 here at the church and also for 2021. But then the pandemic, COVID-19, and everything changed. Most of those plans did not come to fruition. We did not do most of the things we had planned for last year or this year. And you and I are learning how to live in this new reality. But here's what I want you to know. God was not caught off guard by COVID-19 by this pandemic. He knew that it was coming. He knew what would happen. And brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God has an eternal plan. He is still moving forward with his plan. And there is absolutely nothing that is going to stop God from moving history toward the grand climax that will occur at the second coming of Jesus, the resurrection of the dead, and the judgment of every man and woman that has ever lived, and then eternity with him in heaven. And then for those who did not know Christ, eternity in a place of suffering called hell. God's plan is moving forward, and the pandemic is not Change that. The messes in this world, the messes in life, all the hardships and struggles don't change or stop God's eternal plan. He continues to move forward. And the good news is that you and I are part of His plan. You and I in life, we're on a journey. And the truth is, our journey fits within God's eternal plan. Our lives have a place in the eternal plan of God. I don't know about you, but that blesses my heart. That really encourages my soul. I want you to think of it like this. Think about parallel tracks. And and, and the top one here is God's eternal plan, and the bottom one is our journey. And our journey is a small part of that plan, but it's still part of his plan. And these tracks are happening. They're moving at the same time. They're taking place in this life, in the real world. So here's the question. How do I keep my journey, how do I keep my travel, my journey on earth in sync in sync with the plan of God. How do I make sure that I follow along in my life, in my journey with the plan of God and what that means for eternity? I want us today to learn some lessons, some valuable lessons about keeping our journey in sync with God's eternal plan by looking at the life of one man in the Old Testament named Abraham. Now, my part and your part in God's plan may not be as big as Abraham's part was, but we can still learn from him. We can learn positive lessons. We can learn negative lessons. We can be encouraged and we can be warned. So I want you to take your Bible, please, and open it with me to the book of Genesis chapter 12. We're going to look at this whole chapter today. And and really, we can divide chapter 12 into two halves, two parts. The first part, the first half of this chapter It's so encouraging. It's so positive. It's about God's call in Abraham's life and how his journey fit within the eternal plan of God. The second half of the chapter is about one time in Abraham's life when he got off track. 
when he messed things up. And you and I can learn positive lessons and, and hear some warnings, learn some negative lessons, if you will, from what happened to Abraham in this chapter. So let's read together, starting in chapter 12 at verse 1. The Bible says this, Now the Lord said to Abram, this was before his name was lengthened to Abraham, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. Verse 2, And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you shall be a blessing. Verse 3, And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. That was done through the coming of Jesus Christ, a descendant of Abraham, if you will. Then verse 4, And so Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot, his nephew, with him. And now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran, when he left his home and moved to Canaan, the promised land that God was going to give him. Now, in my journey through life, in your journey through life, there are some things we need to know. There are lessons that Abraham and his experience teach us. If I'm going to fulfill my part in God's plan, stay in sync with God's plan during my journey, then I have to be willing to leave some things behind. I have to be willing to make some changes in my life, and it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing thing in my life. You see, Abram had to leave his home of Haran. He had to leave his extended family and move with his immediate family to a new country, a place that he did not know, a place he had never seen. He had to make some changes. And one of the challenges you and I face in life is that we become so comfortable with what is familiar that we're not willing to move forward. We're not willing to make changes. But if we're going to stay in sync with God, His plan during our journey, there are going to be those moments when we must be willing to make changes. Those moments when we must be willing to let go of what is familiar, what is comfortable, so we can experience the new and the best better that God has for us. When I was a young man and Monisa and I were considering leaving Kentucky and moving to Sumter, South Carolina, God calling us, he used the story of Abraham to give me peace that it was okay to trust him and move to a place I'd never been before, experiencing things that I had no idea that lay in front of me. I had to trust him and Abraham's journey encouraged me. But it's not enough for me today to depend on what I did all those decades ago. Where I am now as a 63-year-old man, I have to be willing to continue to let go of what is familiar at times, to make changes so that I can experience the new and fresh that God has for me and stay in my journey in sync with God and His eternal plan. And so do you. Are you willing to let go of the things God's asking you to let go of? Are you willing to make the changes God's asking you to make? But there's another lesson. I have to also know that when, when God blesses me, it is, is, it is not just so I can be blessed, but I, have the, I need to have the mindset that every blessing of God in my life is given to me in part so that I can in turn be a blessing to others. You see, God's eternal plan is for us to be a blessing to others others. And so in our journey, when he blesses us, it means that in his plan, we are then to be a blessing to others. In the verses we read a moment ago, God said to Abram, I will bless you. And so I will make you a blessing. And Abram, I'm going to bless you by making you a great nation. But through your descendants, I'm going to bless the world. And that's what he did in sending uh, Jesus Christ. You and I must take all the blessings of God, all the resources that God gives us, all the good things in our lives, and surrender them to him and his purpose, his mission, his kingdom, and allow them to to be a blessing to others. It's all part of the journey, all part of the process. And if I'm going to stay in sync with God, yes, I have to be willing to let go of things and make changes, but I have to also use everything that is a part of my life, not only to bless me, but to be a blessing to others. Another lesson is I have to learn how to be patient. There are times I must wait on God because his timeline does not always line up 
with my timeline. See, I'm going on this journey in life, and God has this eternal plan. And sometimes in my journey, I want to rush things. I want things to happen when I want them to happen. But God in his eternal plan knows there's an appointed time, there's a better time. And he's saying, wait, when Abraham left his home and extended family in Haran to move to Canaan to the promised land. And God said, I'm going to make of you a great nation through your descendants more than the stars in the sky. Abraham was 75 years old, but he didn't have a son, did not have an heir. It would be another 25 years before Isaac, his son, his heir would be born. And 25 years is a long time to wait on the promise of God. There were moments during that 25-year journey that Abraham and his wife Sarah, who later was known as Sarah, became impatient. And every time they became impatient because God's timeline did not match theirs, they made a bad decision and created problems that would follow them for the rest of their lives. You and I must learn to wait on God, that his timeline does not always match ours, and have some patience that is undergirded by faith that God knows what he's doing. And then another positive lesson from the first half of Genesis 12 is that I need to stay close to God, and so do you. In, in, in Abraham's travels from Haran to the promised land, there's an interesting pattern. Everywhere he went, every time he showed up someplace, he did something. He would build an altar and he would worship God. In fact, in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 6, he went to Shechem. And then in verse 7, we're told that the Lord spoke to Abram and said to him, to your descendants, I will give this land. Notice at the end of verse 7, it says, and so he, Abram, built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. So he moves to Shechem, he builds an altar, and he worships God. And then in verse 8, Eight, he moves on to this, this mountain located between two places in the promised land called Bethel and Ai. And the Bible says at the end of verse 8, when he got there, he built an altar to the Lord. And he, he called upon the name of the Lord. So Abram, he had this pattern of wherever he was, however long he was there, he would build an altar, keep his focus on the Lord God who had called him and worship God. And that's a great lesson for all of us because we're going to face challenges in life. We're going to face hardships and unexpected things in life. And it's important when they come that we have an altar so that we are constantly worshiping God, staying in touch with him so we can do well and stay in sync with the plan of God. But here's the catch. Here's the challenge. Sometimes the challenges that come this, the dis, disruptions to our life, such as this pandemic, sometimes the unexpected things that happen, the bad things that happen, even the good things that, that, that happen in this real world, because listen, God's plan and our journey are all taking place in this real world, being executed in this world, and sometimes all the stuff that happens can distract us and cause us to not build an altar and not worship God, we're going to encounter all kinds of circumstances. And think about this. God's plan and our journey is happening in an imperfect world. It's happening in a sinful world. We got a picture of that with the pandemic. We have a picture of that with all the chaos and unrest in our country. And God's eternal plan and our journey, listen, God's plan's being executed by imperfect people. I'm a sinner. You are a sinner. We're not perfect. And yet we're trying to be in sync with the plan of holy, perfect God. We're not a perfect people. And we have free will. And sometimes when our free will and our sinful nature, our imperfections meet up with the reality of life, we make bad decisions that get our journey out of sync with the eternal eternal plan of God. And in the second half of Genesis 12, that is exactly what happened in the life of Abraham. Let's read together in chapter 12, starting at verse 10 through verse 15. The Bible says this, now there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt. So he leaves the promised land of Canaan, makes his way to Egypt to sojourn there during this famine. The end of verse 10, for the famine was severe in the land. It wasn't a mild one. It was a really, really harsh one. Verse 11, and it came about when he came near to Egypt that he said to Sarai, his wife, this is one of the most tragic stories in the Bible. He said to his wife, see now, I know that you are a beautiful woman. Verse 12, and when the Egyptians see you, they will say, 
this is his wife, and they will kill me, and they will let you live. They're going to kill me, so you will be a widow, and they can take you as their own. Verse 13, please say that you are my sister, so that it may go well with me because of you, and that I may live on account of you. And it came about when Abram came into Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. And Pharaoh's officials, some people in the court of the king, if you will, saw her, saw Sarah, and praised her to Pharaoh. They said, we saw this woman, and she is very, very beautiful. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. He, she became part of his harem. And uh, his wife, we later learned, doesn't mean that they necessarily had had sexual relations because the custom was there was a long process of preparing her for the day she would actually meet the Pharaoh and uh, all of that would uh, happen. But I, I, I've read this story over the years and every time I read it, I, had, I have the same reaction I imagine you did. What? I mean, what? Abraham, what were you thinking? Why would you do such a thing? Why would you create such a mess? There's, there's no redeeming qualities in anything Abraham did in the second half of Genesis chapter 12. And, and before I point out some lessons for us from this negative experience, from this mess that Abraham uh, created, can I share just a couple of things with you kind of parenthetically? One is this story for me points to the authenticity, the veracity, and the accuracy, the reliability of God's Word of the Bible. Because if I was sitting down to write a holy book to make the, a hero of the faith look great, I would not write a story like this. I would not make up a story like this. I would not tell a story like this. And probably you wouldn't either. We want our hero to look great and always good. And the fact that the Bible time and time again with almost every man of God in the Bible, the Bible never varnishes over their failure, never varnishes over their sin. It's all there for us to see and, and learn from. And that points to the authenticity of the Word of God. And the second thing, and I know you'll agree with this, I am so thankful that the status of women today is better than it was all those years ago. Because when you study history in ancient times, women's status was not always very good. It varied century to century and culture to culture, but in many ways they were considered property uh, with, with, with lesser rights than men, and sometimes it was just just a tough, tough existence. And I don't understand everything about those cultures. But ladies, I am so glad that the only person you belong to is God. And that's the only person I belong to or any man belongs to. That's the only person any of us belong to is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful that the status of women today is better than it was all those centuries ago. Now, back to this story, back to this mess that Abraham created. Why? Why did he do this? Why did he lie? Why did he put his wife in such a predicament? Why did he make such a decision? Well, one reason is fear. He was afraid they would kill him so they could have his beautiful wife. He was afraid. Another reason was self-preservation. He wanted to live, and apparently he was willing to do uh, a lot that was wrong so he would be alive so he wouldn't die, fear and self-preservation. Now, here's, here's the thing. Fear and self-preservation, if, if that's our focus and what's motivating us, many times that leads us to make decisions that are short-sighted, decisions that are wrong, and decisions that create a mess. But brothers and sisters, there was, a, there was another reason I believe that, that Abraham made this mess, and it's this. He forgot to build an altar. You remember that we, we saw earlier in chapter 12, everywhere he went, when he left his homeland and made his way to the promised land and he was in Shechem, he built an altar, he worshiped God. And then when he moved to a mountain uh, in another location, the promised land, he built an altar and worshiped God. And now during this famine, as he traveled south to the Negev and then on down into Egypt, there is absolutely no mention of Abraham building an altar. No mention of Abraham worshiping God. All the disruption in his life, the, the severity, the famine, the, the having to leave, the, all the unsettledness, all, the, all of this caused Abraham to lose focus. And he did not build an altar, and he did not worship God at an altar down in Egypt. And it is so easy for you and me to be distracted by life, 
Be distracted by a pandemic. Be distracted by a growing family. Be distracted by all the demands of a career or a job. It's so easy for us to get so involved in and busy with the the blessings of life, all the activities of our children, the blessings of life, the financial blessings, and now we have a place at the lake or we have a place at the beach or we have a place in the mountains. It's so easy for us to allow life, the good things in life and the hard things in life to cause us to not take time to build an altar where we encounter Jesus Christ and we stop worshiping him him consistently. We lose our focus on him. And and the next thing you know, we're, we're making decisions that are motivated by things other than the presence of God, the word of God, the plan of God, the will of God. And those decisions sooner or later catch up with us. And that is exactly what happened in Abram's life. You see, if you're going to build an altar, you've got to be intentional. During this pandemic, I've seen so many of God's people do just that. They've been intentional and they have dug into the Word of God. I am so thankful that we have hundreds of people that are reading the Bible every day Part, uh, using our Bible reading plan. I'm so thankful that every day hundreds of you are watching the, the video devotions that we release at 5 o'clock every Monday through Friday morning so that you can get in. Uh, those, those devotions Those devotions are, are based on the chapter you're reading that day as part of our plan. So many of you, so many of you have, you, you put a stake in the ground. This last year during, the, uh, during all the changes associated with COVID, you put a stake in the ground. You said, this is who I am. You built an altar and you made certain that you kept your eyes on Jesus Christ and you worshiped him. And because of that, you are spiritually better off today than you were in the past. And you haven't drifted the way others have. I've known others though, who haven't done that. During the all, all the upheaval of the pandemic, the upheaval of the political crisis and other things going on in our country did not build an altar. And did not keep their focus on Christ, but they kept their focus on the famine. They kept kept their focus on all the things they were afraid of. They might kill me so they could have Sarah. All the things that scare us. And when your focus is on on the hardships of life and your focus is on all the things that you're afraid of in life and you're not building that consistent altar where you are worshiping your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then your thinking is going to be wrong. Your emotions are going to be wrong, and as a result of that, some of your decisions are going to be wrong, and you're going to create some messes for yourself and for others. And so you need to make certain, you need to be intentional that you are always building an altar where you can worship Jesus Christ so that as you journey through life, you remain in sync with the plan of God. You do not get your life out of sync with his plan, because you begin focusing on everything else instead of him, instead of the Lord, instead of his plan, and how your life fits with him and his plan. And I know I may sound like a broken record to those of you who heard me preach a lot in the last year, but I'm going to keep on preaching it. I'm going to keep on saying it. My focus and your focus is the Lord Jesus and his plan and how we fit into that, how we are to be in sync with that. And to do that well, I've got to stay close to my Lord. And to stay close to my Lord, I have to build an altar where every day I'm worshiping him. Build an altar where every Lord's day I'm worshiping him and not let that get away from me. You see, there's a there's another important lesson from this sad chapter in Abraham's life, and and it's not just the reasons he made a mess, but it's the fact that the mess he made caused him to, instead of being a blessing to others, you might say he became a curse to others. Remember, Abraham was to be blessed and then to be a blessing. But what happened because of the mess he created at this one moment in his life? We'll look at it a little closer in Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse 17. The Bible says, The Lord struck Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Verse 18. And then the Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? 
Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her for my wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. And Pharaoh commanded his men, his soldiers, concerning him, concerning Abram. And they escorted him away with his wife and all that belonged to him. You see, Abram in his fear, Abram in his focus on the, pan, on, 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 on the famine, rather than building an altar and keeping his focus on, on his God, made a, a mess, and the result was that he hurt other people. You see, you and I are supposed to be a blessing. We can be a blessing to this nation. We can be a blessing to our family. We can be a blessing to our community. We can be a blessing to our church or we can hurt any or all of them. We can, you could say, be a curse to any or all of them. We can create pain for innocent people as Abram did. And Abram, Abraham, in, in this one mess that he created, he hurt innocent people. He put God's risk at plan. What would have happened if Abraham had been killed because of his deceit to the king? God had promised through him he was going to build a nation and, and, and eventually send the Messiah. He put God's plan at risk. And here's something else. Abraham embarrassed himself. I mean, once his deceit became known to the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, the king brought him in and confronted him. Can you imagine how humiliating that was? Why, you who claim to be a man of God, why did you lie to me? Why did you deceive me? Why did you do this to me? Can you imagine how embarrassing that was? And then Pharaoh had his soldiers, his army, if you will, escort Abram, his family, all of his possessions, everything, escort them to the border and kick them out of the country. They were expelled. Think about that. The consequences of Abraham making decisions based on fear and hardship because he wasn't focused on the Lord and didn't build an altar, all the damage that was done. And so God had to come to Abraham's rescue, and he did. The Bible actually tells us the reason God sent the plagues on Pharaoh and his family was to prevent something worse happening, to rescue Sarai and to rescue Abram, if you will. And brothers and sisters, hear me. Sometimes when we make a mess, God rescues us. But there are other times when he does not. The one thing God always does is move his plan forward. God's eternal plan is always moving toward that great day in the future. We in our journey want to stay in sync with him. And sometimes we create a mess and God rescues us and puts us back in that path. But other times God doesn't. He allows us to suffer and to experience the consequences of our sin, the consequences of the mess we made. But the one thing God always does is keep moving his plan forward. You see, God can fulfill his eternal plan with me or without me. He doesn't have to use me. He can use someone else. It is his choice. And so let me wrap this up by just highlighting some really important key lessons for us from both the positive and the negative experiences of Abraham as related in this one chapter of God's Word. Here's the first one, and I hope this encourages you. God can use imperfect people. Abraham became the father of the Jewish nation. It was through his descendants the Messiah came and the world was blessed. He was a man of tremendous faith. We see that time and time again in the Old Testament. But Abraham was far from perfect. And this is a tragic, sad example of his sin, of his imperfection, of his failure. And yet God used him. If God chooses to, God can use imperfect people. And I don't know about you, but that blesses me because I know I'm not perfect. There is sin in my life. There has been sin in my life. There is sin in your life, and there's been sin in your past. And yet, if we are willing, God can still use us. Praise God for that. That's the first lesson is that God uses imperfect people. The second one is this. Our messes, the messes we create, hurt innocent people. So don't make messes. Stop it. Stop making all those messes. You're hurting people. Here's the third lesson. God is moving his plan forward in time, and he will do it with us or without us. He'd prefer to do it with us. 
He'd prefer us to keep our journey in sync with his plan, but God's plan is going to keep moving forward in human history. Here's another one. It is a privilege. It is a privilege for me, for you, for us to be part of God's eternal plan. As God's plan is moving forward, keeping our journey in sync with his plan and knowing that God is using us to make a difference in this world, to make a difference in other people's lives, that is a privilege. It is a privilege. And I'm afraid that so often we go to church and we forget the privilege that is ours to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, to be his servant, and to have our lives, our journey in sync with him and his plan for eternity, his plan in this world. What an honor. What a privilege. Stop taking that for granted. Celebrate it and give God your absolute best because God is giving you a great honor to be part of his plan for this world. Then here's the last lesson. Always stay close to God. Always be intentional about building altars so you can worship him. Where you worship him on Monday, where you get into his word and worship him on Wednesday, where you gather with his people in that sacred gathering we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that sacred gathering that takes place every Lord's Day. You stay close to God. You be intentional. And don't allow life, the good, the bad, whatever, don't allow life to crowd out Jesus. Don't allow life to crowd out crowd out the altar. Don't, allow, don't, don't you let life crowd out your time with God. You stay close to him and you focus on him first and then deal with life. Do not deal with life and then try to find Jesus. Focus on Jesus first. Always focus on him first. Be intentional about that and then deal with what comes in life. One last thing. When Abram was kicked out of Egypt and returned to the promised land, chapter 13 verse 1 says, so Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev and everybody that was with him. And, and verse 3, he, he went on his journeys from the Negev uh, as far as Bethel. Notice this, to the place where, he, where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Remember that mountain? That mountain between Bethel and Ai and, and, and he built an altar? He goes back to that place. And in verse 4, to the place of the altar which he had made there formerly and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. If you're in a season when your journey has gotten out of sync with God's plan, if you're in a season of Egypt when you've been making bad decisions, you've not built altars and focused on God and worshiped him consistently and it's, it's, it's catching up with you, what do you need to do? You need to go back to an altar. You need to find an altar. You need to do what Abraham did and go back and get back in touch with God and recenter your life, refocus your life so that your days to come can be in sync with God's plan, not only for eternity, but God's plan you and you know what God will love you God will forgive you God will help you and you can be a blessing not only will you be blessed but you can be a blessing that's what God wants for you brothers and sisters God bless you and I'll see you next Sunday stay stay with us as we worship Jesus with some music come on let's stand and sing together again Sing about his love so great. Your love so great, Jesus in all things. I've seen a glimpse of your heart for a billion years. Still I'll be singing. How can I praise you enough?
Thank you for joining us online today. It's always a joy to worship with you, whether it's online or in person. We want to especially invite you, if you're in the Rock Hill area, to join us in person in our worship center, either at 9 a.m. or 1030 on Sundays. Uh, in those worship experiences, we're providing a physically distant space so we can spread out and enjoy worship without being uh, too closely connected with People outside of our family unit, we give you a place to sit uh, where you can be there with your loved ones, um, but also be able to enjoy worship in a very cl clean and comfortable environment. Uh, we also have coming in March, at the end of March, we're going to mark your calendars. We're going to have a very special parenting uh, workshop and Sunday, really, with Richard Ross, a world-renowned speaker and trainer in student ministry and really helping parents engage with their students. So whether you're a grandparent, a parent, a student, or uh, maybe you want to be a parent one day, or one day you're going to be a grandparent. This workshop and this time together is going to be for you. March 28th is going to be completely free. We want to invite you to be a part of that experience with us. Thank you again for joining us online, and we'll look forward to hearing from you and seeing you soon. <laughs>